Welcome to Ask the Expert. It's a brief, informative, engaging, and lively discussion uh, about cutting edge uh, science and advancements in type 1 diabetes research. This presentation is going to be like a short six to seven slides uh, of the scientists' uh, exciting new work, followed by about 15 to 20 minutes of Q&A. And um, we are recording this event. We'll post it afterwards at the Sugar Science Society YouTube channel. Um, after the presentation. And if you have any questions for our guests, please feel free to enter them in the chat, raise your hand at the end of the pr presentation. Today we have our guest coming directly from uh, immuno, uh, immuno, MUML, correct me on that pronunciation. Um, we have uh, Lana K. Um, Sheffer, I hope I'm saying that right, and Milena Pavlovic. They are studying at the University of Oslo and I'm um, really excited to have you guys talk to us. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you for the opportunity to present to Mutamel. Yeah, it's gonna be great. So I wanted to, you know, just to sort of frame the discussion, ImmunoML or ImmunML is an open learning ecosystem for machine learning analysis of adaptive immune receptor repertoires. It's kind of a mouthful but I'm gonna let you guys sort of dig into it and really explain um, what that really means. So why don't we just start with just sort of giving us a quick bio, brief bio sketch of uh, both of your sort of scientific careers. And Melena, what, do you wanna go first? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, I'm, a, I'm a PhD student at the University of Oslo at the Department of Informatics. And uh, my research is mostly related to applications of uh, machine learning on adaptive immune receptors and repertoires related to diagnostics uh, development. Um, before that, like my background is in uh, computer science and software engineering and machine learning. So I'm trying to kind of apply that in uh, immunology. Uh, yeah, because that would be briefly about me. Yeah, no, it's a great intersection for sure. And how about Lanika? Yeah, so I noticed when Milena and I do these introductions, it's uh, always 90% uh, the same because <laughs> I'm also a PhD student uh, at the Institute for Informatics at the University of Oslo, working also with uh, similar topics. So I guess the main difference is uh, my background was uh, a bit more bioinformatics. Um, but yeah, we're, we've been working on, on similar topics uh, throughout our PhD. Fantastic. Um, and so I think, um, I guess I'd like to ask just you, you know, I gave that formal introduction about what ImmunML is, but if you had to sort of sum it up in a couple of sentences, what, how would you kind of relate it? How would you talk about it? You can, since we're with you, go, keep going, Lanika. Oh, okay, 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 sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, so um, ImmunML is a platform that kind of makes it possible to thoroughly benchmark methods for applying machine learning to air data. So um, there exist several platforms for just applying machine learning in general. But they are not really uh, like scikit-learn and PyTorch and these kind of platforms are, are more for um, yeah, just creating machine learning uh, methods in general. But uh, with air data, it is kind of a, um, there's some, some particular interesting biology behind it. And, and we think that uh, it could benefit from having some specific methods that are uh, kind of tailored to these kind of problems where, where yeah, that are, I don't know how much I should now go That's into great. the biology. That's but, uh, fantastic. That's a really good explanation. And I mean, is there anything to add there, Milena? Um, yeah, one, uh, just one thing is, uh, well, what Lonica actually worked mostly on and now skipped uh, was that we worked uh, a lot on actually developing this uh, Galaxy interface so that this is really useful to people with uh, not so much uh, technical background, like domain experts that would like to try out these things and get in the field. And so you're really kind of offering it in an open science capacity, right? You want to engage with the community and you want them to be able to onboard, you know, easily. Is that right? Uh, yes. Yes, yeah. so all the, the platform is uh, publicly available. The code is uh, also available online. So anyone interested can take a look into that. Yeah, which and is- We've tried to make it uh, 
as easy as possible for beginners to step in with very thorough documentation and tutorials and video tutorials and yeah, everything to get people on board. Yeah, and I think that that's what's so powerful about this approach is that you guys, you know, you have this, um, you're inviting all kinds of different biologists into the water here to try to, to, to use this, right? Like, for instance, in type 1 diabetes research, there's many different disciplines that, you know, look at the disease. So there's cell biologists, there's the GWAS people, there's, you know, the endocrinologists, clinical people, um, you know, they're all over the place, but they're all, you know, and they're interested in different facets of the disease, but, you know, just sort of talking about the onboarding and how easy it is, do you feel like it would be easy for, you know, a cell biologist in Alberta, Canada, uh, or a, you know, physiologist even down in Argentina to like use your system? I think um, we have, so, I think we, we kind of have thought about several different user groups for, for ImmunML. And there's, we are also aiming at people who are um, kind of more machine learning experts and developing their own new methods. So that is one part of it. And I think that maybe those parts are not always as easily accessible to anyone. But in addition to that, we've also tried to come up with these interfaces like in our Galaxy web uh, uh, platform where we try to rephrase the questions in a way that is more related to how the, the biologists sees their data and what kind of assumptions they have about their data without needing all the technical details of the machine learning. And of course, if they are really interested, then it can be a stepping stone to get more familiar with it, to first try out this, this visual interface. And then, um, yeah, we also export like uh, the, the the files that ImmunML internally uses to define the analysis. So then they could from there on uh, read up on more of the documentation and, and tailor their um, their input files even more. But uh, yeah, so we, we kind of try to have these various different routes that you can take to get started with ImmunML, some more biology orient oriented and some more um, aimed at uh, computer scientists. Do you guys uh, have much handholding going on in terms of, you know, support as people, you know, can they reach out to your team or is it just sort of all documented? Well, I would say it is kind of both. So uh, we have, uh, uh, because the, the platform is uh, open source, we, uh, users that have questions can ask on GitHub or directly report uh, complaints from Galaxy if they have some issues. And of course, they can contact uh, us directly, or we are also present on Twitter. And uh, we have a YouTube channel with tutorials. So in any of those venues, we are kind of available to reach. So and yeah, hope that no, people very will user friendly. Them. I like it. I mean, and I just I think it's, it's, it's phenomenal. You've built this thing, and it's free and open. It's amazing. Uh, do you have some slides you want to share? Um, Yes, uh, maybe just briefly explain this in a more structured way, how we got to this and what is it that we can actually do with it. That you sounds know. good. Yeah, if we want to talk through it or if you want to walk through it with slides, either way, it's up to you. Um, no, I could uh, maybe share my screen. Sure. Should be. I think you should be able to see the slides. Yes, perfect. Okay, so uh, I will just briefly talk about uh, ImmunML. So as we said, ImmunML is a software platform for machine learning analysis of adaptive immune receptor repertoires. Um, and uh, we have a very nice and uh, user-friendly uh, web page where you can find all this information. And this is immunml.uio.no. So you can find more information there. Um, so the idea with this uh, platform was, as Lenica mentioned earlier, that there is some complex bio biology behind uh, adaptive immune uh, receptors and repertoires. And uh, it is really hard to try to, based on, on the receptors alone, to predict the disease. But at the same time, it's uh, very powerful. So it is uh, the, the complex problem because uh, there is a lot of uh, noise, uh, a lot of different diseases, uh, and a lot of different receptors. There's low overlap between 
uh, different repertoires. And that's, uh, but yet we still re uh, react to, to the same diseases, which means that there has to be something similar between them. And, uh, but because of this huge diversity, uh, that signal that we want to find, it's characteristic of disease we believe to be uh, very complex. And that's why we thought that machine learning could be the answer to that. Mm -hmm. uh, there has been uh, quite some uh, approaches to show that this is possible in general for different uh, diseases, like uh, CMV or uh, multiple sclerosis and some types of cancer. Um, but so we know that it's in general possible, but it is quite hard to, to actually get started if you're not like a computer scientist. Um, it, there is a different, different assumptions between different approaches and, and so on. So what we wanted to do is to provide a, a platform where it is possible to evaluate the different approaches that were developed, to develop new approaches, and to choose what is most appropriate for, for, the, given, uh, for the given study. So what we do is more specifically two different use cases. One is uh, sequence-based uh, classification um, to predict the specificity of uh, immune receptors, and then hopefully to also recover the motifs that uh, the, the subsequences that uh, determine the specificity of receptors. And the second main use case is uh, repertoire-based classification, where we want to do diagnostics based on uh, immune repertoires. And how we do that? So what we have is uh, some uh, data set, a lot of immune receptors, uh, immune repertoires, for example, and the specification of the analysis. So we say, oh, we want to train a machine learning model that will be able to predict uh, T1D status, for example. And uh, then we put that in uh, ImmunML. And as the output, we get some HTML, HTML reports, uh, trained models, um, and, and so on. How it does that is, it has different instructions, kind of different things that we can do. And one of those things is, for example, to train a, a machine learning model. And what it will do is uh, train uh, different uh, models, like, like logistic regression or uh, neural networks or something like that. Uh, it depends on, on the user. And uh, evaluate it in a very structured way, which is easy to skip when you're just starting in uh, machine learning. Uh, so we have this very robust way of uh, just Test, selecting the model and uh, assessing the performance and providing all that information uh, to the user. Uh, we also have, as we mentioned, the Galaxy web interface. So uh, people could just go and uh, visit this uh, uh, website, which is available on galaxy.immunomel.ua.no, which can also be accessed from the main web page where we have different uh, tools that uh, kind of do different uh, things related to this process. And we also have a lot of documentation on how exactly, um, how exactly it works. Uh, the, the platform can also be used from the command line or to a high performance uh, computing cluster or depending on the needs and, and, the, and the use case. And there is also a, a preprint available uh, on BioArchive. Uh, there is this uh, public Galaxy instance Python package source code is available on GitHub. We have a lot of documentation. Um, and uh, we are also trying to integrate with uh, popular tools in this field. So we are integrated through Galaxy with the eye receptor, uh, which is a repository for um, with a lot of immune receptors and repertoires. We are compatible with AIR standards, data exported from VDJDB, MXCR, 10x, uh, ImmunoSeq adaptive. Uh, some uh, we can also use synthetic data for just for benchmarking purposes. We have implementations of approaches like Emerson and colleagues from 2017, where they classified the uh, CMV status, uh, some custom deep learning architectures. And also we are compatible with uh, tools like PCR Dist, Glyph, Incantation, ImmunArc, and, and so on. So we put a lot of emphasis also on uh, being interoperable with uh, already existing tools. Yeah, it's a very rich system. Yeah. Uh, that that was the idea <laughs> yeah and uh yeah i think that's uh, it i just uh, like to mention that this was a team effort with a lot of people uh with and i would especially like to mention uh Lonneke and uh victor great and gashatil uh, uh and then a lot of other people who also contributed to develop 
management of specific tools, testing, and and so on. So. Yeah, no, this is this is fantastic, and I would just say, you know, not only is it a really rich environment, but it's like one you what you have here. It seems like is sort of like a one stop shopping. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's like you can go in here and you could just stay there for days and do you know several different inquiries with different you know looking at different parts of um of your of your data and looking at it in different ways i mean it's really interesting and i wondered i i don't know i think that victor and Gera are in the call i wonder what were they the initiators of this and and what drove this first you know the creation of this or maybe you can answer it too whoever can answer it you know no problem. I think I will leave this to Gashatil or Victor. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, so Gashatil's here. <laughs> They're not in. Um, um, I, I think it's a, it's a very interesting interplay uh, uh, between um, the different people that has been has, have been involved, and and I told kind of Melina and Loniki that I. I I mean, uh, as more as kind of the group leaders and seniors, then Victor and I kind of have had the ideas a bit from different sides, um, kind of. But but in reality, it's it's never like that. It's it's through a dialogue and it's uh, through the interpretation also that like Milena did the first year when she was alone and also when Donnicky joined in. So I think that. Uh, the end product is very, very different from what I would have kind of initially envisioned for it. And I mean that in a good, uh, good way, actually. So, <laughs> um, and, and I think that's, um, yeah, I, I think in, in practice, it's the, like you said, the devil in details and, and, uh, and, and even the kind of holistic overview picture of it is is a lot due to to all these choices and all these questions you ask while you do things. Um, so, yeah. So it's. So did yeah. this this whole project started what then? How many years ago? Um. So, they, the background for it was when, when uh, actually when Milena started uh, three years ago. So now, uh, then we. The idea was just that she was going to do machine learning analysis and, and some benchmarking on, <laughs> on uh, air data. Wow. And, and what we saw was that there was so, so much, uh, I'm not sure if I would call it hassle, but I think like, like in terms of doing, um, doing machine learning, it sounds like, I mean, it should be a conceptual approach where, where you want to do something. Yeah. But, but often there can be so much fiddling so, so much time on what we in computer science sometimes also call, call a boilerplate code, which means that you know what you want to do and you just have to express it in, in your system. Um, and then we saw that all this kind of boilerplate coding is kind of a waste of work. And we didn't want kind of Milena to waste so much work on just like doing these very specific things. Uh, so we thought that, okay, we tried to do it in a way that will save us a lot of time in the end. And, and that, I guess the aim was only that Milena would save time in the long run, that, that, uh, that she didn't have to kind of do all the same work every time for every project. So, yeah. So in building a better, you know, set of tools for herself, she really built a better set of tools for, for everyone or started that process. That's really interesting. Um, and I think that sometimes necessity, right, is the mother of invention because you're kind of like, I don't want to deal with all this anymore. I want to make this better. And then, and then uh, in doing so, you really kind of opened a, a, a door to other things. It's really interesting the way that came about. I would also ask you guys, what are your thoughts about? Um, have you heard of Immune AI? It's a company that's uh, based out of Tel Aviv and uh, the Bay Area in San Francisco. They're kind of doing some, not exactly the same thing, but they are using, and of course they're a company, they're not an open source system, but they're using, you know, um, oh, he's got a message. They're using, um, you know, machine learning um, to sort of look at immune cells, basically. I guess that's in a nutshell. Okay, I hear. Is there a message? Uh, so do you guys have any commentary on that? Sorry, people are chatting. Adding, sending me a chat. 
question. So uh, maybe I can take a, a question. Um, so I think, so based on the description on the website, they're looking at um, single cell sequencing, empowering that with AI. Yes. In order to discover new therapies and diagnostics. Um, I guess the aim is the same, but of course we don't know the underlying technology that they're using. So mm -hmm. difficult to comment on this, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I just was curious as whether you guys had a symbiosis or were you running on parallel train tracks? That's kind of was my question. I think parallel, I think parallel. Right, yeah. so yeah. that's really pretty exciting to the scientific community where you, know, you guys are offering this open source mm -hmm. to the scientific community, all these tools you know, that are, you know, behind a firewall of a company, which is great too. I'm not knocking it, but I mean, it's, it's pretty exciting that all these tools are available um, just, um, just for the taking really. Yeah. So I, I, I'm really sort of like lauding you uh, as much as I can on Twitter and other places, because I think it's phenomenal. Um, I guess there was um, a, a question, where do you see uh, immune ML in the next one to two years? Where do you see it evolving? Anybody? I guess there are a couple of things that uh, we discussed that where this could go. But uh, one thing uh, we've been discussing recently was uh, better integration with the Galaxy community so that uh, immunomel tools can be installed basically on any Galaxy through the common tool sheds so that people could use it even in an even easier way. Um, that's, uh, that's one thing that also Lonike will be presenting uh, in, uh, I think about two weeks, uh, our efforts on, on that side. Right. Other than that, uh, there of there's of course, uh, uh, a lot of things uh, that uh, could be uh, improved, uh, like any software is, yeah. and no software is ever done. So there are yeah. lots of things to, to do there, to uh, develop new methods, to, to tackle things like uh, how could we combine uh, multiple different data sets that uh, have their own uh, biases and uh, are not just, you cannot just put them together, even if you could technically do that. So there are a lot of uh, a lot of things related to those are also some current developments in in machine learning that could uh, improve the uh, development of uh, machine learning diagnostics uh, in general and uh, improve the, also the interpretability and explainability of of these tools. I guess those were some of the things. Yeah, no, that's great. And another question: How does um... Uh, how many users do you have? I mean, do you have your majority of users in US or, I mean, in Europe or in the US or both, or are you growing into, you know, different countries? How, how is it working? So we are tracking statistics um, weekly and we are seeing um, usage from all over the world. So it's pretty uniformly distributed. I would say. That's fantastic. I see you're, you know, you're now partnered with University of Florida, which is a great entree into the T1D world, uh, research world. So, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, by amplifying what you're doing here, we can, um, you know, encourage many more people to, to use the tools that you're, you know, you're, you've created basically. Um, and I mean, is there anything, you know, in thinking about this, how, um, what kind of opportunities do you see out there that are just sort of like the low hanging fruit, the easiest things to do for sort of a young, a postdoc and just to sort of dabble into the system. I'm talking about a postdoc that would be studying type one diabetes. Can you imagine like, oh, this would be like a really great, you know, thing to do just to sort of a one-off or a first step. So, um... So our system is designed to work on immune receptor data, right? So as soon as they have some kind of immune receptor data, which is nowadays quite um, easy to come by yeah. comparatively, um, they can immediately put this into our framework and um, try to look for patterns uh, that could be apparent that could be linked to type 1D or other diseases, yeah. 
And that could be the first step. Yeah. That's the first step. Okay. But on the flip side, like what if you were trying to generate a hypothesis? Could you use your systems to, could you use immune ML to sort of mine pre existing data? Yes. So that's what was mentioned before that we, that you can um, uh, get data from uh, third party databases. You can stream them into our system and then couple them with your own data to um, augment your own data. Yeah. So that's possible. Yeah. And we have actually shown this. Um, so the principle is explained in the preprint also. Yeah. Right. Okay. So go to the preprint first. Yes. If you're looking for a hypothesis and you've just joined a lab, uh, you know, yes. in the in the receptor world, then yes. you know you can do some mining, and then when you get your first um, set of results, then you can go back. So yeah, you can you can use it in many different uh, time frames and situations. I wonder if anyone else from the audience. Oh, sorry, did someone have something to say? Yeah, I just just thought we could add that. Like, uh, it's very useful for a kind of feasibility study. I think also to think speaking of like postdocs and, and so on, because um, if you have some data and you wonder whether you can find good patterns in there, if you now spend several months kind of developing all the machine learning from scratch, and then you realize that there's something with your data that doesn't make it possible to find these patterns in their data hmm. uh, then you then you have kind of a yeah that, that's not the ideal situation to be in but, um, and by using platforms like immunimal you can quite quickly uh, see in a way if this seems promising and so on so i think this ability to early do this kind of feasibility check and see if you need to for instance gather more data or a different kind of data or ask slightly different hypotheses and questions without having to invest too much effort until you get these, these answers, I think it's important. Yeah, that's key because it accelerates the research, you know, at the, without, um, you know, wasting resources and time and everything else. So yeah, if you can clear cut the path forward rather than kind of, you know, just stomping away through the, the meadow, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be in a better position. So that's important. Um, We've been we've looked at some of that, and it is hard because it's such a multifactorial disease, right? And there's so many moving parts to really understand the data sets that you actually start with. You know, which are these are these the best data sets to start with when you're asking questions or making a hypothesis? So, um, is there anybody else? Would you guys like to ask uh, offer anything else before we sign off? I think this is a really fascinating talk, and we look forward to seeing you all again. Good? Okay. It was great talking to everybody at ImmunoML. We'll continue to watch what's happening there um, and intersect with you again. Uh, we invite you guys to join us. We have an upcoming event in, I think, two Saturdays um, with um, Leo Ferreira's uh, Designer Immunology Clubhouse. So if you guys have an iPhone and you can get onto Clubhouse, please join us there. It should be a very interesting discussion. All right. Talk to you soon. Have a great Thank rest you of your much. evening. Thank Bye. You. Thank, Bye. You. Bye. Thank you again.